Yo, what's up guys? I'm Nuo, and today I'm going to be showing you how to complete Vow of the Disciple with only three people. Trio Vow of the Disciple is one of the most fun challenges in the game right now for any hardcore PvE player. Whether this is your first ever low man, or you're an experienced player looking for some guidance, this guide is sure to help you out. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. Obviously, I skipped the payload section, but come on. I shouldn't need to explain to you how to do that section. Now, any class combination can complete this raid, but I highly recommend at least two Warlocks. Ideally, your class combination would be two Warlocks and one Titan, but you can be very flexible here. And you can even change classes between different encounters. So let's talk loadouts for this encounter, and then I'll go over strategy. An unstoppable weapon, along with Dead Messenger and an Eager Edge Sword, is probably the best loadout here, but you can alternatively use Gallarhorn in that slot. Both Galley and Eager's Edge have their own strengths and weaknesses, so feel free to experiment. Warlock should use Icarus Dash or Void, Titans can find success with either the Bonkhammer build or Void, and Hunters, well, Void is generally good, uh, as well as Stasis. And don't forget to switch your Finders, Scavengers, and Reloaders and all that stuff. The strategy for trio acquisition is pretty straightforward. One person will defend each totem. Whoever sees the side where the knight is on will call it out. All three players will look for the knight as quickly as possible. But once the knight is killed and a room has been called, whoever is closest to that room will enter while the other two people defend the remaining three totems. This is where stuff like Icarus Dash and Eager's Edge can come into play because you're able to go between totems very quickly. Now, you repeat this three times until you need to enter the symbols, find which totem all the symbols are on, and then you've completed the round. The map on the screen, which was adapted from Reddit user u slash dependent location 136, should serve as a guide for you if needed. The three players on the map are represented by the three colored blobs, as well as the three colored highlights of blue, yellow, and magenta. One last thing to note, when defending totems, the most important adds to kill are the abated adherents. These are the guys that shoot the totems, and they're going to quickly progress the white mechanic if unkilled. And now, I will demonstrate one phase of acquisition. Skip to the timestamp on screen if you don't want to watch it. That is so fire. Oh my god. It's traveling. Checking. Oh, I see it now. It's oh, yeah, I got down it. Here. Lane. Got it. Okay. It is kill. We should go now. Yep. I got your stuff at time. Don't worry about it. I see next night. Okay. okay, the call is light. Oh, I guessed correctly, let's go. Pink. Uh, next one's a praise, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna kill my guys. Okay, uh, there was a video. I'll let you know they call in a second, knocker. Light. Love. Yeah, light is next, uh. Alright, uh, looking for it. Nine or whatever. What was the first call? Uh, pink. I see nine. Yeah. Can I just put it above the I'll go. Just, uh. Yep, I'll shoot the door. So let's check my AWP. Yeah, I got it. the call dark dark yep. hit S should be mine right Bob pink ass it could be mine too yeah it's, it's not, mine. not mine yeah it's, it's mine. mine let's kill your bomb first okay. okay I'll 
get pink in us. Alrighty, caretaker time. Arguably the most difficult and annoying encounter of the trio, but it's definitely not the least enjoyable. After running this a few times, I've developed strategies that really curb any ammo RNG needed and make the rest of the encounter relatively simple. To start, let's talk class composition. I strongly recommend two warlocks here. You're going to see the best results. The final team member can really be whatever class they want. I'll go more into that a little bit later. You should now see an infographic on the screen. Just relax. I'll explain it part by part. Damage is going to be done primarily with special ammo to conserve heavy drops as much as possible. Too much reliance on heavy can land the team in tough situations and failed final sands. There's no better option than the slug shotguns for special ammo DPS. To help out with their damage fall off, the two warlocks will both be on well with Luna faction boots. One of them should use an empowering rift, the other a healing rift. Reed's Regret, or alternatively, your best linear fusion, will be used for damage, just sparingly. I'll go more into depth on that when I discuss the strategy. I recommend Risk Runner as your primary for two reasons, survivability and ammo finders. It's also great for shooting symbols, so there's no problem there. All players should be ready to swap to a sniper for the third damage phase, as the boss cannot be slugged for the majority of that phase. The snipers can also be used for final stand. When that swap to snipers does happen, switching to outbreak as well is quite helpful in case you need to save ammo. Finally, the player not on well should be your designated debuffer. Whether that's with tractor cannon, tether, and or debuff grenades is up to you. Finally, make sure to have both linear fusion rifle and shotgun finders, as well as their respective scavengers on. And if you can, try to put arc and solar resists on so you can survive as much as possible. That's the gist of the loadout, so now let's talk strategy. There are two roles in Trio Caretaker. One person is on stun duty, and the other two people on symbols duty. To start, I'm going to go through each role on its own. The person assigned to stun duty has the greatest risk of dying, so I recommend letting this person be your Well of Radiance Warlock with the Healing Rift because they can use both that Healing Rift and their Healing Need to survive. The goal of this person, much like a regular six man, is to stun the caretaker as much as possible. Although there are a few known methods to solo stun, as in shooting the back and front at the same time, I'm going to be electing to use the two man tactic because it's much easier to learn and much more consistent. When the encounter starts, you'll stand so the caretaker faces you with his back toward the symbols, and you're going to want to stun him as often as possible. Every time you shoot his head, call out stun, and one of the people on symbol duty will shoot his back. It's not very difficult, but here's a quick example of this process. Come in. Square Second. witness. Uh, stun. Yep. Go. Yeah. Worship. Ink. Stun if you can. I don't know if you can see that. I got it. Worship pink. The other two people are on symbols duty. You'll each go into the room one at a time and grab three symbols. When you come out, if your symbols are on three different sides, call out to your partner which symbol they need to shoot. While it is possible to shoot all three symbols solo, Again, for people new to this low man, it can be a bit tricky and can cause unnecessary wipes, so we'll just opt for the simpler tactic. Once the offering is accepted, the other person goes in and gets their three symbols. Once those are accepted, the first person will enter for the second time and grab the final three symbols. Once those are input correctly, the damage phase will start. Another thing to note is, when you're outside waiting or just clearing ads, it's important to get ready to shoot their caretakers back whenever the stunner calls out. It's also important to clear the abated appearance shooting the tower as you don't want to wipe. Here's a quick demonstration of this process. Come here. Square Second. witness stab. It's done. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Worship. Pink. Done if you can. Yeah, I got it. Worship pink tower open up. Worship pink tower. Alright. All in all, those rows are pretty simple, so let's talk about the damage phase. To start, make sure all your Vandal snipers are dead and clear as many adds as possible. 
When the play activates, your first well user can place a well if you've opted for the two well strat. A little technique you can do here is place the well without actually touching the place, so just place it a few feet in front. This way, damage doesn't start while you're stuck in the well animation, and you can start it after placing your well. During damage, I like to fire six slug shots before switching over to my linear fusion rifle and firing three or four shots. This conserves heavy ammo a lot, while also dealing enough DPS to move on. When the plate fades, place your second well for the second plate using the same technique. I do the same damage rotation for all of the plates, or until I run out of special ammo and switch entirely to my heavy. For the final plate, have both your Empowering Rift Warlock and your Healing Rift Warlock place their rifts to act as a mini well. You should be easily able to hit the required damage, pick up ammo, and head up the stairs. If you are not using the two Warlock strat, you're going to have to adapt the strategy a little bit. Um, and depending on where the boss is standing, you might not be able to slug him. So in those instances, you'll just have to use Linear Fusion Rifle ammo. After second phase, make sure to switch to your sniper before picking up ammo. Because for the third floor, you cannot hit the boss with a slug shotgun from that range. Also, for the third floor, you can save your wells and just use rifts. And you can also save your heavy ammo and just use sniper and outbreak. This way, for final stand, you should have plenty of heavy ammo and both of your wells. If you've done the strategy correctly, final stand should not be a challenge at all. I'm trash. Oh, fair, Actually, fair. whatever. I'll, I'll save. It's fine. Just use outbreak. Oh, I forgot a rift. No, I have full linear. I'm just using my snipe. Yeah, I'll have one here too. Oh, there's another brick here. Why not all my trios? I don't get this little book. Nah, the, when you use this strat, like, ammo RNG, like, there's really no RNG when it comes to ammo. Like, You can bro, just have... primary him, or yeah, outbreak exactly. him from third I floor small... anyway. I know, but, like, I just have so much ammo compared to normal. Like, it's not your I'm literally, just like, sniper full ammo. For this. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, let me, I'll put the middle well. Don't don't do anything yet. Okay. Let's go. Oh, Paul, bro. Go. Hating it. Oh, I hit all seven there. Oh, sex. Three, Three, two, two one. one. Bro, he's dead. I'm just gonna. Yeah. He's dead here. When do you ever see that? This encounter seems to be one of the scariest from the outside, but what if I told you it's actually a lot easier than you think? Once you learn your role correctly, this encounter is insanely fun to do with three people because it is so fast paced. Similar to Caretaker, I'm going to go over each role individually. This is how you should think of this encounter anyways, three people doing their own thing, and if everyone has their role down properly, it will all mesh together. Although there are many strategies to this encounter, I believe the one I'm explaining here is going to be the most consistent. If you have another strategy that works for you, that's perfectly fine but just bear with me. To start, assign one player to be the Nut, one player to hold the Vogue Relic, and one person to hold the Taken Relic. As the Nut player, you will actually not pick up the Nut in the first room. Instead, here you can just call symbols and get the door open. You will pick it up in the transfer between room 1 and 2. When you exit the first transfer room, head right. Jump up to the high ground and drop the Nut. Here you will add clear, kill the Gift Keeper, Get any symbol calls you can see, and then grab the nut after your 30 second cooldown is over. Once grabbed, kill the sheeted knight at the back of the room. You can now just hold on to the nut until the final two glyph keepers are dead. But before entering the symbols, make sure to shoot the second knight. This will give you enough time to stall relics in the next transfer room. When you enter this transfer room, do not dunk the nut. Dunking the nut is what extends the timer. So by having your team deposit their relics before you, you can wait out their timers before you deposit, and then you fully extend the timer. So in this instance, when the Vogue Relic person's cooldown is below 2 or 3 seconds, you can dunk the nut on the left side and wait at the door. It should open about 10 seconds after the nut is deposited. When you enter this third room, immediately go right. Clear as many ads as fast as possible to get the Glyph Keeper to spawn. Then nuke it. When I'm on Warlock, I Nova Bomb this guy. It's really important to kill this guy as fast as possible. If the boss was Scorn, read the symbols. Once you're done the symbols, or if it was the Taken boss, head back to the transfer room and pick up your nut as fast as possible. Come out of the transfer room and head to the stairs on the left where you'll be cleansed for the first and only time in this room. Yes, one cleanse is all you need. 
Trust me. When you can, shoot the knight with the nut to extend the timer. Ideally, you will have at least 50 seconds at this point. If you have fewer than 45 seconds, you are going to be cutting it very close. After the knight is dead, run up the stairs and drop your nut in a safe location. I like to put it where the stairs have the switchback section. Kill the glyph keeper and get symbol calls if scorn. When your timer is done, you can pick up the nut and immediately kill the knight who should be spawning in the middle if the other people have done their jobs properly. Now, you might be concerned about darkness at this point, but darkness stops going up and actually starts going down as soon as the fourth glyph keeper is killed in each room. So if you are on pace, you should be just fine. As the nut, you are the only one who can shoot the symbols. Delay your deposit again in the middle, though if needed, dunk before terminal resonance hits one second. Head to the door to the fourth room and wait until it opens. Upon entering the fourth room, you will go to the right glyph keeper. Similarly to third room, kill it as fast as possible, get calls if needed, then book it back to the transfer room to pick up your nut. Leave the transfer room and you will be cleansed in the middle platform. Then, extend the timer by killing the knight who should spawn just in front of you. Once the knight is dead, you're free to drop the nut again. This room is far more lenient than the third room, but the enemies are much more lethal. So play smart and slay out. Once everything is dead, including the final two glyph keepers, grab the nut and kill the final knight. Input the symbols, dunk the relics, and you are done. The Vogue Relic is a fun one. For the first room, all you gotta do is kill adds. Pick up the Vogue Relic when it comes available in the transfer room. For the second room, you will float between sides. There's no need to drop your relic in this room, but if you do, make sure to cleanse right after you pick it up. Once the first set of Glyph Keepers are dead, get any relic calls and cleanse the team. Slay out and repeat for the second set. When the symbols are input, immediately dunk your relic on the right side in the transfer room. Wait 30 seconds and pick it up again, and wait at the door to the third room. For third room, you will beeline it to the stairs on the left. Drop your relic at the top of the stairs and slay out. If scorn, get the symbol calls. When the glyph keeper is dead, walk forward a bit and kill the pesky overload, then come right back and pick up your relic. If the glyph keeper was taken, you can get the calls now. Both the taken and the nut will be converging on you for a cleanse at this point, so just stand on the stairs and cleanse them. Immediately after both are cleansed, you will cross the gap to the right side. Once you are next to the adds, drop the relic and slay out. You might have to ignore some adds that are immune from the blight, but you can still spawn the glyph keeper if you kill everything else. Kill the glyph keeper quickly and make any symbol calls if needed. Pick up your relic and head to the door. Dunk on either the left or the right, but not the middle, because that's where the nut will bank, and wait out your timer before picking up again. Head to the door and wait for it to open. For the fourth room, you'll be in charge of the left side. Immediately leave the transfer room and hop into the middle platform where you will drop your relic. Clear out the left side of the keepers and get the calls if needed. When you can, pick up your relic and cleanse everyone in the middle platforms. You can drop your relic after everyone is cleansed. Continue to clear out adds on the left and try to stay alive. Remember, these adds are pretty lethal. Kill the second wave of glyph keepers when they spawn. If you feel like you're a bit slow, you can pick up the relic and get a second cleanse, but it shouldn't be needed. Finally, once everything is dead and the knight has been killed by the nut, head to the door where the nut will enter the symbols and you are done. The taken relic person will actually get to pick up the nut in the first room. This way, the nut guy isn't on cooldown for the second room. Once the knight is dead, get the symbols from the right side and open the door. You should dunk immediately. In the second room, you will head left and clear out all the adds over there. Just make sure to get cleansed after the first wave of glyph keepers dies. And communicate symbols before opening the door to the second transfer room. The taken relic will spawn back in the middle after the nut deposits. Now here's when it gets tricky. As I'm sure you're aware, there are two different spawn patterns for the blights in this room. The blights will always zigzag, so if you encounter a blight on the left to start, you're going to go right. If you encounter the blight on the right, you're going to go left. I've outlined on the screen the two scenarios. Path 1, where the blight is on the right first, is green, and path 2 is blue. Regardless of the path, your job is to cleanse both blights 1 and blights 2 before getting cleansed on the stairs. You will be getting cleansed on the stairs after both glyph keepers are dead. If you'd get the green path, we've discovered the best strategy is to ignore the right side blight, unless it's absolutely needed. In this case, if it is needed, you will go to it after destroying blight 3. Regardless of the blight pattern, you should never drop the relic unless something has seriously gone wrong and you need to improvise. Once all four glyph keepers are dead, all symbols are in, 
You can either dunk on the left or the right side, again avoiding the middle because that is where the nut wants to deposit. For the fourth room, you will zigzag again. There's nothing super crazy about this room, so just continue to zigzag when you see blights. After you destroy two to three blights, make sure to cleanse in the middle. Communicate with the Vog Relic when this will happen. Continue to destroy blights and eventually you'll spawn the final Glyph Keepers and open the final room. Dunk your Relic and you're done. Simple. So, you've learned your role. Now let's get into general tips, including loadout and communication. For your loadout, Void 3.0 is the best option right now for all roles. The Taken Relic even counts as a Void Gun, so you can use Volatile Rounds with it. I recommend Galahorn, but if you keep blowing yourself up, you can always switch to Wither Horde. Other than that, it's really up to you. I would, however, recommend that the Vog Relic and Nut use a Blinding Grenade Launcher, as it can really help the Taken guy cleanse out some of the trickier Blights. At the end of the day, beating this encounter feels awesome, and once you have, you can move on to Rolk, the First Disciple. For a raid as good as Vow is, the trio for the final boss is probably the most anticlimactic. It's pretty slow, a three phase, and I would argue the only challenging part is final stand. So be prepared. If you are using the suggested two Warlock, one Titan setup, you will be good to go. But you could also opt for a second Titan if you are struggling with final stand. You will be using two sleepers and a divinity for DPS, as it's the easiest to use and very consistent. Who is on which roll doesn't really matter, though I would not put a Titan on divinity, that way the divinity is plied for the Thunder Crash. My personal preference for a primary in this encounter is a Dragonfly Hand Cannon, as they're great for Ag player, so something like Nation of Beasts or Fatebringer. And as for your special weapon, I generally like to run a sniper, but a grenade launcher could also do the trick. As for mods, you'll want to make sure everyone has high energy fire and radiant light on. I would also recommend powerful friends as it will make the whole radiant light thing more reliable. Your divinity should run Aeons and will be the designated dunker. More on that in a second. Everyone else can opt for DPS supers and exotics. Both sleeper users should rally to the flag with a chess piece that has double linear fusion rifle reserves. This will give you 16 shots as opposed to the normal 13. Then, I'd recommend switching off that chess piece to a chest fitted with more resist mods. You can always switch back to that chess piece to pick up more ammo before a second and third phase. As for the strategy, it's pretty simple. Assign one person to be the designated dunker, and the other two people will rotate on and off leeching. This is just a six man single dunk strat with only three people. Nothing fancy. Whoever is assigned dunker should be the one running Aeons. They should try to hit heavy finishers on abominations so your team's ammo economy can reset after each phase. Dunk six times and hit as many finishers as possible before damage. Going up to the damage room, the sleeper users should swap to their reserve chest piece to make sure they have 16 sleeper shots ready for damage. Then they can switch back to the resist mods as it will keep that ammo. In the damage room, allow your designated dunker to keep breaking the glaive while the others call symbols, just like a six man. After all four weak spots are broken, Damage starts. Once Divinity is applied, immediately pop Super to give everyone on your team high energy fire. All you gotta do is just hit fire Sleeper into the Div Bubble while trying not to get killed by his attacks. You will repeat this damage phase three times. The only difference is for final phase, you wanna save Supers for the final stand. For final stand, wait until he dashes or teleports before throwing out your Super, because sometimes his immunity period lasts longer than normal, or sometimes he will move right as you cast your Super. Additionally, try not to get hit by the lasers. And if you don't, you will kill Roke and complete the Trio Vow of the Disciple. That's it for the guide, and I really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to share this video with your friends, drop a comment for the algorithm, and smack the like button. This is definitely the video I have spent the most time on, so I really hope it helps a few people get their Trio clears. And if you're feeling brave and you do want to go for a Trio Flawless, remember not to die. Otherwise, it's back to the payload, bozo.